Number four says a race car starts from rest on a circular track of radius 433 meters. The car's speed increases at a constant rate of 0 0.32 meters per second squared. At, at the point where the magnitude of centripetal and tangential accelerations are equal, find the following. A, the speed of the race car, B, the distance traveled, and C, the elapsed time. So what we have here is we have this racetrack right here, and and so the radius, and I know I didn't draw it perfectly circled, but imagine it's a perfect circle. The radius of this right here is, uh, we'll just say to the center of the track, the radius to the center of the track is 433 meters, 433 meters. And it's saying that the car is accelerating, it's accelerating at 0 0.320 uh, meters per second squared. So it's constant acceleration and um, and so the the point where the magnitudes of the centripetal and tangential acceleration are equal. So I'm assuming that this accelerate that it's talking about tangential acceleration. It's talking about this increase right here is equal to 0 0.320 meters per second squared. And so um, and so what what it, what I mean is that its acceleration, so its change in speed at, at, at this point right here is equal to this magnitude and so whenever it gets to here its change in speed is is at this magnitude. And now I, I realize whenever I was going through the textbook on page 173 um, the there were some serious uh, I guess it, w it was really hard to understand how the the centripetal acceleration, so the centripetal acceleration was derived, and so what it actually equals is is v squared over r, where v squared is the is the tangential velocity, and so what I like to do is go ahead and, and try to explain how that is really quickly, and so what we have is this this arc length, and this is the radius to the center of the arc of to the of this arc. And we're going to say that uh, so th this is the radius, and this arc length is um, is going to be uh, well, we, we don't even know what it is. So, so we have the radius, and at this point, this um, this car has a velocity of of v initial, and so then he's accelerating internally. So his, the the magnitude of this velocity here is uh, as he gets to this point. Is this is equal to v initial, but the direction is is different, so we have to call it v final. And so we can actually take these two, since these are equal magnitudes, we can compare them. So uh, whenever you do like vector addition, so that would be the first one, and that would be the second one. Um, but what we want to do is put them on the same on the same uh, center point and compare the change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here. And I'm going to take this point and 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 connect it to uh, this point right here, and see what we get. So um, I have this, and I have and I have this, and so if we call if we call if we call this the change of a, of velocity. So the velocity was this, and then it went to this. So we call this right here the change of velocity. We can actually look, and we can compare this vector. We can put it up here, and look where it's pointing. It's pointing directly to the center. But the other interesting thing is that is that if we draw a line straight across here, this change of velocity, um, we have a, a a triangle. It's not the same size, but it has the uh, the uh, the same ratio of sizes as this triangle right here. So if we call this, this is the change of s. Then, then we could say that that this velocity. So we're going to say that this velocity divided by this radius. Or actually, let's let's take take a step back, and we'll say that. Um, this this uh, change of s, so we'll say that the change of s over over this radius, so the change of s over this radius is going to have uh, because the the dimensions are are similar, we're going to say that it's going to equal the change of 
of uh, velocity divided by the actual velocity. So divided by the actual velocity. And so these guys are going to be equal. And so here we have our, our thing. And so if ang centripetal acceleration is going to be, acceleration is the change of velocity uh, divided by time. Well, let's isolate the velocity, and then we can divide this equation by time and figure out what the acceleration is. So the change of velocity is equal to the change of, of displacement divided, and this is supposed to be, and so divided by r times velocity, times this uh, velocity, uh, the magnitude of the velocity anyhow, um, this equals the change of velocity. And so if we divide all of this by time, so times it by 1 over t, then we, we end up getting the change, so the change of velocity over time or, or the centripetal acceleration equals the change of, of uh, the pa uh, display divided by r times the velocity divided by the time. And so we can actually rearrange this so that um, we switch the r and the t and it will not change the value because we're multiplying. If we were adding or, or something else we couldn't rearrange it, but we can rearrange it because we're multiplying. So we get that the change of s over t equals equals the velocity over the radius, or I'm sorry, not equals, but times the velocity over the radius equals the centripetal acceleration. So this um, change of s is like saying that the that this is the arc length. So this is equal to, and if we were saying, um, if we're doing linear kinematics, this would be equal to change of x or or d distance. And so if you the change of x over time is equal to the velocity. So we have we can just cross this out and call it velocity times velocity over r, which which equals uh, velocity squared over r. This equals the angular, the centripetal acceleration. And so this question, and you can write this in a couple of ways because we can use this same thing to derive that that angular acceleration equals the the radius times times the um, the angular displacement squared. But um, we don't need this one right now. Uh, so we're going to stick with this, and it says we, it wants to know, so this is our centripetal acceleration, and it tells us in the problem what the tangential, the tangential acceleration is. It says it's 0 0.320 meters per second squared, and it says where the centripetal acceleration equals the tangential acceleration, how fast is it going? So we just set up, we just set up our, our problem equals 0 0.320 meters per second squared. And we solve for velocity. So you multiply both sides by r and you find you take the square root. So v equals the square root of 0 0.32 times radius. The radius was 433 meters. So 0 0.32 times 433 meters, take the square root and that equals 11.76 meters per second. And um, that's the answer to part A. So then in part B it wants to know the distance traveled. And so we we set up our our, um, our change of x. We want to find the change of x, the distance traveled. And so the way we can do that is using just regular old kinematics and I'm sure there's probably a, a better way to do it using using this new um, angular stuff, but so I'll use the equation um, from v final squared minus v initial squared equals 2 times acceleration times the change of x. And then we just solve for the change of x by dividing by 2a. So v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a equals the change of x. And so the initial is 0. The final uh, we solved in part a was 11.76. So we square that, we divide it by 2 times the acceleration, which is, it gives us was 0 0.320. And so I take 11.76, I square it, and I get approximately 216.4 divided by, so 2 times 0 0.32. Uh, I'm sorry, I just actually gave away the answer because I, I'm reading my calculator wrong. Um, so 11, let's do 11.76 divided by 
two times uh, two times a, which is zero point three two. So eleven point seven six squared is one thirty eight point three divided by divided by zero point six four equals the the distance of two hundred sixteen point four meters. And so and then the elapsed time it wants to know the elapsed time. So we we do elapsed time as as v final uh, minus v initial over t equals a and so we solve for t so we get v final minus v initial over a equals t we know that this was zero the v final from uh, part a was 11.76 the acceleration uh, gives us in the problem 0 0.32 so 11.76 divided by 0.32 is equal to t equals 36.75 seconds.